So welcome to week 11 of the Winter Wellness Plan. And this week, Jack Green, we are going to talk about sleep. I love sleep. Um, <laughs> yeah, as a, as a former athlete, we used to aim for 10 to 12 hours of sleep. So I am well routine to staying in my bed. Um, how about you? Yeah, I think sleep um, underpins um, the the other drivers of our, our form, our well-being. And I think, you know, if we're sleeping well, then, you know, we're balancing stress, we're recovering well. If we're you know, kind of exercising, um, that can help drive sleep. And I think sleep will come across a lot of them. And I think if things like our financial well-being are um is a concern that can affect our sleep. So I think sleep will interact with the other drives of form. But I know for me, it's um, one of my priorities. If yeah, getting quality sleep is so important in how I stay well and stay balanced. And um, it's interesting, isn't it? It's probably the one we compromised the quickest when we're kind of busy or we've got a lot going on. Yeah, and I think it, it fits under the the boring, simple things that we all know we should do, but we're quite, as you said, we're very quick to sacrifice them. So in terms of our nutrition, our physical activity, and then our sleep, they're all standard solid things we know about, but we we like to go for the more glamorous things sometimes. Oh, what can I do to, to really fix this? That's a new app or a new whatever. And actually, yeah. have we got the basics um, basics working? And, and yeah, as I said, from my sporting experience, sleep has always been seen as, as the number one supplement as such. Yeah. And why is that, Jeff? Because that's when we recover. So that's when you get that that real, you know, deep sleep allows you to recover both mentally and physically. Um, you know, when you think of, of babies and they're sleeping all the time, there's a reason for that. And it's allowing us to grow and develop and, and move forward. And this is really good that we're talking about sleep now when last week we were talking about recovery and, and looking after ourselves. So this is this is so linked in and hopefully people will, will see that. Yeah, 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 absolutely, and and yeah, for me, um, it, it's it's a it's misunderstood a bit, isn't it? That so much goes on in our sleep. You know, our, our brain is kind of resetting and storing memories and all of that sort of stuff. Um, you know, our bodies are physiologically recovering. We're getting balance from the stresses of the day, and um, you'll know all about heart rate variability. Um, but it's a good way of measuring stress and recovery. And um, I've done some um, some, some self-analysis with a, a product called First Beat that kind of measures the gaps between your, your heartbeats. And you can basically see on a graph whether you're recovered and, or in recovery in, in, in a kind of green um, dark part of the graph versus when you're in a stress or activated state. And most of our recovery will happen when we're sleeping. And that's recovering from stress of you know, kind of stressful days, meetings, deadlines, busyness, all of that sort of stuff. When we sleep is when we re re recharge and recover from that. And, and it's really interesting to see it in kind of black and white or red and green as the, the case of these graphs are, because you, know, you can see how we can then impact our sleep with things like alcohol, for example, the delay recovery well, well into the night. Yeah, and I think that brings us on to, to something I'm quite passionate about in all, all things of well-being in terms of when you speak to people and when you share stuff is we're all pretty good in terms of awareness, understanding of a lot of well-being. The majority of us know that. But actually, how do we apply that? So, Rob, how do you, you know, make sure that you get as good a night's sleep? That doesn't mean it will guarantee a great night's sleep, but as good a night as you can get. What are the kind of things you do? Yeah, for me, for me, it's around kind of setting yourself up for for good sleep. Um, and yeah, you know, I think in the digital age, we we're often um, looking at our phones, whether it's emails or social media or news, and and that's again not great because it's it's getting us wired. The you know the light that is emitted from the device is suppressing melatonin, which is the the hormone that helps us get to sleep. So for me, I think, and, and one of the big things that I do is I like to read a book. And if I don't read a book that, you know, um, doesn't sort of quash the thoughts in my mind and get me into a relaxed state. Um, and, you know, I like to read just just complete science fiction. There's just total escapism. Um, 
but I think more on a more general basis, it's it's really important to just set ourselves up for a good night's sleep by turning tech off a little bit before. If we've got worries in our mind, perhaps writing those down to get them out of your head, doing something relaxing, such as reading, or it could be meditating or a warm bath, whatever it might be, to just get ourselves in the right frame of mind to, to sleep. And I think the other one, which I've been really struggling with a little bit, is the fact that exercise is then really good for promoting sleep because it builds sleep pressure um, and makes us sleepy. Um, so for me, I sleep much better when I can exercise regularly, which unfortunately, as you know, because of the, the long COVID is not at the moment. Yeah, quite a few points there that I find quite interesting. You talk about with tech and, and the blue light. Um, so within most sports organizations now, all their, their athletes are given blue light glasses so that right. you can still look at your phone, but you won't get that same you know, pressure of, of what that light brings to you. So that's something to, to consider. I know a lot yeah. of athletes, as soon as it goes dark, they're, they're wearing nose around the house or whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's something that's really interesting. What I do, little tip with tech, is I charge my phone outside of my room yeah. um, so that I don't have that pressure of it's there. And if I do wake up in the night, like we do, a lot of us, you know, regularly stir and, and wake up. That way I'm not looking at my phone and then, oh, well, there's something that's come in. And then by the time you've gone back to sleep, you've lost an hour or whatever. So I charge yeah. my phone outside. And then what I found really interesting for what you said there and something I hadn't thought about, it's something I already do, but I hadn't really thought about it, was writing down your thoughts. Yeah, You can double that up as like a gratitude journal. So we're getting that double kind of, right, well, actually, I'm, I'm thinking really positively here. Um, and it's helping me then with my sleep hygiene. Other things in terms of we know about temperature and it's got to be a certain temperature, not too warm, not too cold and so on. You know, want to be pitch black, make sure you've got some good curtains. Um, simple things, really. Um, clean bedding, all some simple stuff. And I'm someone that sleeps 10 hours a night plus. So, um, yes, I'm very well practiced in all that. But it's really important. As I said, it's the number one supplement for any any sports person, um, let alone any human being anyway. So it's definitely yeah. something to take seriously. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And what, what about I'm a big fan of the kind of lunchtime nap, um, not again, not for too long, try to keep it, you know, 45 minutes or so. And, and um, I, I find that kind of a, a real good productivity boost for the for the afternoon when i can when i can schedule one um did you used to use that or do you use that jack i used to nap a lot mainly because i was so tired uh, <laughs> yeah more than anything but napping counts towards your your sleep for the day so don't think that it's separate and um if you you learn about the cycles of, of sleep so um, REM cycles and all these things that I'm not a scientist and, and my knowledge is isn't as great so I'm not going to go too much into detail on it but basically sleep for around an hour roughly um, not too much more not too much less because that gets us in the right cycle between it being a proper deep sleep and being next to nothing so we always aim for an hour uh, most days I would but I train twice a day so it's quite nice to having having that little break in the middle but yeah so important to have an app and I know it's one of your favorite things in the world Rob yeah, uh, I think it's a real gift to oneself. Uh, it feels it feels indulgent, um, but I know it's doing doing good, particularly if you're working hard. So, um, yeah, that that that's a good one. And and the sleep cycles are interesting, aren't they? I think you know we um, we would typically go through three sleep deep sleep cycles um, in a good night's sleep. Um, you know that's when all the kind of deep work in the brain is going on and um, again I'm not a, an expert and hopefully we, we will have an expert contributor uh, for, for, for this week once we've uh, arranged um, them to, to, to come on board um, but I think the other point to note about sleep is that it's really individual in terms of how much that, that we need I think the guidance would be seven hours minimum but you know, you 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 take ten hours, which is awesome. Somebody else might actually be okay on 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 six hours sleep. Um, but rule of thumb, below six, it's not going to work. But we're all very individual regarding how much sleep we need, aren't we? Yeah, and um, and you've heard me say about this study before because I love this study. Uh, they did a study on elite athletes and sleep, um, and then injury risk. And basically, they found that if you were an elite athlete, you were training, and you slept less than eight hours a night, you were eighty percent more likely to get injured than someone that slept more. So you are essentially guaranteeing an injury, and it shows how important sleep is. Now, yeah. obviously, we're not expecting people to to sleep eight hours plus. It's not always feasible when you you have a life and work and family. But for me, it's just a case of 
try and sleep more than you were. So I've got athletes that sleep four hours. They're not great sleepers. It's just how it is. And they're thinking, oh, eight hours plus, how, how do I get to that? And for me, it's just, well, if you get to four and a half hours, that's half an hour extra that we've got. And I'm happy with that. And we'll just keep building on it. So don't yeah. think that, oh, I only sleep four or three. Um, and now I've suddenly been told I've got to get to eight. It's just do more than you were, hopefully, and, and, and use some of the tips that you'll be able to take from this to, yeah. to help you get to that. Yeah, I think that's that's a good challenge that we can set um, for, for our warriors is sleep more. <laughs> it's just sleep a little bit more. Um, and again, uh, I think if we can set that as a broad and easy challenge that we could prioritize maybe half an hour extra sleep and see how that makes us feel. Um, that could be a good way to kickstart this. But that's the interesting thing, Jack, with um, with sleep and um, the, the effects that we get, the positive effects we get from a good night's sleep, we feel immediately, don't we? So physical fitness and, um, you know, kind of balancing our diet can take a while to, to notice those effects. But whereas a good night's sleep, we kind of get that, 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 that bonus as soon as we have a good night's sleep, don't we? Yeah, and when people talk about the golden goose or a magic bullet, sleep's pretty much it. But we don't listen to it because it doesn't sound as exciting, as I said earlier. Whereas, as you said, with physical activity, typically it's about six weeks before you you see that adaptation um, in terms of of muscular strength and power. But in terms of aerobic, it's a little bit less, but it's not instant. It's not, oh, I've woken up and I'm in much, much better place. And sometimes all it takes, you can, your well-being score, your form score can go all the way up to, to good just from having a good night's sleep nothing else has changed so this is why we've got to prioritize it and and the fact that you'll have more energy to then be able to do all the other things to allow you to prioritize your well-being um, is so important so it's it's basically that foundation isn't it that allows you to do everything else yeah i like that the foundation of good well-being is 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 from our sleep so jack i'm going to ask you in a second if there are any more tips uh, that you can think of one or two that spring to mind for me as um kind of um, making sure you're timing your, your, your food so you're not having a big meal that you're still trying to digest when you're, when you're going to bed. Um, and, and also, I think timing of really intense exercise. If you are doing anaerobic exercise or intervals or that sort of really intense stuff, you know, perhaps try and do that more in the lunchtime part or the morning part of your day because again it can take a while for our body to physiologically recover from that stress and I, i've seen that on the graphs with first beat as well where you know a real heavy training session late at night can then delay recovery by a good few hours um, yeah and then you'll have the adrenaline as well yeah um from that so you won't be able to settle for quite some time and obviously you need to eat after so when we're talking about the eating then we're eating late so you know, your body's still digesting whilst you're trying to go to bed. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing for me is, is you look at caffeine and alcohol yeah. um, and just make sure we're, we're not having them too late unless you're out on a, having a good time um, and enjoying yourself, then you're not too worried about your sleep. But most of the time we're not out and partying. So for me, it's, it's with caffeine and, and alcohol, just there's nothing wrong with having them, to be honest. There's nothing wrong at all with it, but do it at the right time. Don't do it too late because that will affect your sleep. Yeah, and 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 do that with with you know kind of balance and moderation as well, um, and and the timing of it. You know, again, that that glass of wine late in the in the night to unwind will affect your sleep uh, to one degree or another. Um, caffeine, you know, a lot of people would say you know not after two p.m., but certainly not after you know five five or six hours before you're going to bed. You wouldn't want to. To, to be having an espresso because that will affect again uh, your ability to get into that in, to get to sleep and get into those sleep cycles you need to get into yeah and i think to be honest our tips i'm not sure you and i can cover too many more i think we've, we've got quite a few there and, and the ones that i know anyway um but i'm sure an expert will be able to tell us a damn sight more yeah definitely so um there you go everyone challenge for you this week is to prioritize your sleep and try and get a bit more sleep whatever that that can work for you whatever that means to you so stay well and sleep well thank you very much